My next fly I'd like to tie is a CDC caddis. Um, I found out that sometimes uh, your typical elk hair caddis and stuff at certain times at night with the light being the way it is on the water, it's kind of hard to see. And then I found out that, well, through trial and error and uh, casting some other flies that I bought, CDC has a really remarkable light attracting quality to it. And uh, a lot of times when caddis come back to the river, especially in the summertime, it's really warm. And a light, it's kind of towards the end of the day when it gets cool a little bit, they come back to the river and the fish really key in on them. So I need something that I could see a little bit better on the water. So through trial and there, I kind of took the best of both worlds of emerging um, caddis and um, the style of tying in a wing you're going to see here in a little bit of a um, kind of like a Henry's Fork uh, caddis and kind of combine it together with CDC. So um, the first thing I like to do is I'm going to tie in a jam knot with uh, tan thread and it will match the wing and ultimately in the end product and I'll do a complete thread wrap on the shank of the hook and this is a dry fly hook size 16 but when I'm done with the fly we're actually going to end up with a size 14 fly so using a smaller hook but it'll be a larger fly when I'm done on the back end of the fly I like to put a little bit of emerging shuck on there or gas bubble as you will and this is just micro zelon that you get out of blue ribbon flies uh, it's real thin and light and they dye it the dye job is amber and it's pretty pretty close to what the little trailing shucks are off the back of the CDC caddis. I'm going to come up in here and just kind of pop that around up on the top of the hook shank and take a couple nice tight lock-in wraps and then trim this off. I don't need very much. A little bit goes a long ways. So I'll trim it about the hook shank size off in the back. So I just got that little bit of shuck back there. The next thing I'm going to tie in is going to be a little bit of ribbing and I like this opal uh, mirage flash right here. Uh, crystal flash has a little bit of a pinker tones to it. This has a little bit of more of the bluer kind of gassy looking tones to it. A little bit more opal like colors. Um, and I'll rib it just with one, 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 one thread right there. Trim that out of the package. Tie that back in at the at the back of the shank of the hook there. For the for the dubbing of the body of the caddis, um, you can uh, this is Hairtron and it's rabbit fur that's mixed with synthetic blend, so you get a little bit of flash in at it, but you also get that wireness of, uh, of what rabbit provides. And rabbit's great because rabbit can actually, when you cast it in the water, it'll grab air bubbles and stuff when it goes down in it. And so with the glistening of them mixing the, the Hairtron, which is, um, you know, Antron fibers in it, you get the best of both worlds on it. And it's easy to dub with. Now, I kind of want a ratty body on this thing. I'm not looking for the super smooth dry fly body. And as you can see, this stuff's pretty wicked. So I'm just going to take a tiny little bit of dubbing just to start off. And you kind of see how I kind of like made that little noodle or a witch's hat. I'm just going to take my finger and slide that up and go around the hook shank a couple times. What happens is it locks the fibers into the dubbing. Then I'm going to sit there and just kind of use my index finger on my left hand to roll up. And this is making the dubbing go in a counterclockwise motion or twisting around the thread of the hook because when I'm wrapping right now, I'm going in clockwise. And then this just causes the dubbing to sit there and adhere up to itself a little bit tighter as we go along. So I'm going to make kind of basically a cigar shape in here in this area. Real distinctive. Kind of a little bit more wider in the middle and then thinner as I go up to the front. Trim off the excess here. Get kind of the bigger fibers out of there. Now I'm going to come through and just take about three wraps with this flash right through the middle of the dubbing. And that just kicks it off real nice out there without going too crazy, having too much flash in there, just enough just to enhance that fly a little bit. My next, I'm going to install the 
the, the wing's in two parts, and the, the bottom wing, or the under wing as we'd say, is going to be a couple pieces of CDC. And uh, I really like this premium CDC from Trout Hunter. Their dye jobs are pretty much dead on to what, what you need for the insects. This is in tan. I'll pull out a bunch of clumps, and what I'm looking for is to get a couple feathers that kind of match up that are similar. Like these two look pretty close. Some of these, like these smaller ones here, won't work. It won't give me enough material to work with, so I don't need that. So what I'm looking for is like two feathers that are, you know the old saying, two feathers, birds of a feather close together. So I'm looking for to see that my tips are even right there. They've got about the same amount of material on those both. And what I'm going to do is you can see how they're kind of dished out a little bit. What I'm going to do actually is I'm going to put those dishes together so they're kind of like two spoons cupped together or two hands clapped together so that they, they end, and I'll even up the tips so that they're together perfectly aligned right there. And see I can slide it in and out of my hands if I don't think that they're aligned up right and that looks pretty good. Clean out the excess of the, the bottom here. I don't want to work with this stuff. Hangs everything up. And then I'm going to stroke the feathers going forward and then I'll take my right hand fingers and kind of knead it together like that. And that right there is going to be my wing that's going to set up on this. See, knead it up nicely. I'm going to tie that in with a pretty good loop. Now, I set down a really nice couple tight loops on there. And I got a little bit of area that I want to sit there and I'm going to put hackle in to make this fly um, sit there and kind of like pontoon out and stabilize the fly. So this little collar area in here that I got is all thread. You can see how I built up that thread wrap in there. Now I'm not going to cut off these butts at this time because these are actually going to kind of like in an uh, elk hair caddis it's going to make the head of the caddis. So I don't want to discard those at this point. For the overwing I'm just going to take a partridge here and what I'm looking for is caddis wings like a lot of people that tie caddis they're tying them with deer hair and deer hair is really diffused looking and that's why they use it because it, when the light's shining through then the insects on the water the fish see it and that's an attractive quality. So CDC doesn't quite have that diffused look to it. So what I'll do is I'll just take a piece of partridge and one of these feathers just like that and that's going to be an overwing and I don't need very much of it. So I'm going to prepare it so it kind of looks like just that right there. And you see how, how broken up a model that is. That's exactly what we're looking for. And this is just, we're going to lay that right on top, uh, the doll side down. And once again, I'm going to take a light wrap here because if I don't, it's going to twist all over on me. And I'm just going to build up my thread base in here once again. So I basically got this nice little collar area. You can see that, how diffused that looks on top of the CDC. But I got this nice collar area right here where I'm going to put my hackle on. So now for the hackle, uh, I like the, the medium gingers or this barred ginger and it gives it kind of like the legs to the to the caddis. And the size of this out, I got a size 16 hook but if you remember I said we're tying basically a size 14 fly on a size 16 hook. So on my hackle I actually want to go over a little bit. And that's a pretty good one right there. I bend it and I can check it and see, yep, that's almost like two times the gate because if we're tying a typical dry fly, it'd be one and a half times gate, but we're not tying that. We're tying an oversized fly. And I'm going to prepare the feather with the stem right there, tie it in. And I'm actually going to tie this in wet style so that the legs are kicking to the back on this. So instead of having it go forward and like support the fly, I'm not going to do that. See now, wait a minute. There we go. And I'll take my hackle pliers on and grab it on the tip and just sit there and just do about three nice wraps inside this collar area. You don't need much. Lock that down. Come up in front of the eye of the hook. Now I got a lot going on in the eye of the hook there and that's why I didn't have, at this point I haven't trimmed my butts out because it would be virtually impossible to whip finish off with those butts hanging over. 
So this is a good time since I got all this waste on here. I can use this as a handle at the same time to come in here and whip finish my fly off. Just like that. Turn my thread off and use my scissors and I'm going to work it in to where I feel the stem of the hackle and trim that off. Leaving it a little on the long side. That way when this gets wet, I don't use no head cement in here. This stuff gets wet when you cast it, it's not going to fall apart on you. You know, work itself loose. Now I'm going to parallel to the hook right here. I'm just going to come in and trim off the bottom. This is kind of like a low rider caddis that gets down in the water. And then all this waste in the front, almost like an elk hair caddis, I'm going to cut it off. That's going to make the head of the caddis in the front. So as you can tell, that's really, really got a diffused look. You can see it on the water a lot. It rides right parallel to the water, kind of like how the naturals do. And that's the CDC caddis.